What's up? Justin here. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things e-drum related. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day. So this is a requested video. I've been asked to make a video on how Joss Dunn uses electronic drums. This is part three in a series I'm doing. I've already covered Neil Peart's drum set. I've already covered Danny Carey's drum set. I realize 21 Pilots is a very polarizing band. Either you love them or you hate them. I'm in the camp where I really do enjoy their music and I've covered several of their songs on my Instagram channel. But regardless of whether or not you like their music, we're talking about how they use electronic drums because they're very heavily invested in running tracks and stuff because there's only two guys in this band. So they rely a lot on samples, on tracks, and it's very interesting to see how they plot it all out. Every band has unique needs and that forces the drummers to buy certain pieces of electronic gear. So let's jump into his drum set. Of course, we gotta start with the main stage setup. This is what you'll see in all those photo ops, what you see most of the time when he's playing. Let's start off with his Yamaha pads. He uses Yamaha DTX silicone pads. Not sure of the model number, but I believe it's the XP120 SD pads. These are pads that you'll find on the 700 series and on the 900 series of their electronic drum line. These pads have a great playing surface on them. It's like the best feeling practice pad you've ever played in your life. It's a slab of silicone, but there are lots of mini air bubbles inside. So the tom pads and the snare pad actually have different consistency levels. So the tom pads are a little bit softer, the snare pad is a little bit harder. It's got a great feel to it. This pad and all the other things I'm about to mention are all being tied to his laptop and he's running Ableton, so he's triggering samples. He wants to use the exact sounds that you hear on his album in live setup. So that's why he uses these pads because he wants to get at that exact same sound. Now, if we look at the floor here, we'll notice that he's using a Roland KD7 kick drum pad. The great thing about these kick drum pads is that they're very low profile. In fact, most people don't even know he uses these because they're underneath his floor tom or something. I started implementing a foot pedal when we started using tracks. So I can start the tracks with the foot pedal having full control. The pedal goes through my SPDSX and into my computer that runs Ableton Live and starts all the tracks. I'm the one that runs the tracks and chooses when the song starts or stops. So I don't even need a laptop on stage. I can have all the laptops off stage and mirroring what I'm doing on the laptop with an iPad. That way there's no issues with cables unplugging or bass frequencies messing with the laptops. One thing I hadn't thought of was that bass frequencies can mess with laptops and also cables might accidentally come unplugged. So what if he like shifts or move an elbow or something and all of a sudden a cord comes unplugged? If you look to the left of that, you'll notice that he's also using foot switches. I'm not exactly sure what brand they are, but I believe they're Boss. Now most everything that he's using runs into a Roland SPD-SX pad. This is a very, very popular multi-pad from Roland that a lot of professional drummers use when they want to trigger samples. Again, as I mentioned earlier, he wants to play the exact sounds that you hear on the album, and uh, so this pad lets you do that. I started using the SDX pad live when I played my acoustic drum set, so that when there were electronic drum parts happening, I could still play it, not just let it come from some sort of track. I thought that was really cool, still having total control. This is one thing that has been annoying me about live shows recently. Bands are more and more relying on tracks. Not necessarily a bad thing. It makes you have a more full sound even if you're only playing with like two or maybe even three people. But when you have all these backing tracks, it can seem a little bit fake. So the fact that he can start the backing tracks and also use the exact sounds that he used in the album and play it in real time, I feel like that adds to the feel that the music is actually happening in real time and it's not just all pre-recorded. Because that's why you go to a concert in the first place to see actual music taking place in real time. The one point of confusion I have is that the Yamaha pads aren't really compatible with Roland modules and Roland multi-pads. He might be able to get away with it just using it as a one zone pad so that doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, either he's plugging those Yamaha pads into the back of this using it as like a one zone pad or he's got a hidden Yamaha module that we just can't see from these photos. So that's his main stage setup. Let's talk about his B stage setup. So if, for those of you that don't know, a main stage setup is the thing that you normally think of when you're playing in a concert. A B stage setup might be like in the middle of the crowd. It's maybe very small, just a handful of small instruments. It, the whole idea is that you're in there amongst the audience. The problem though is you'll have some issues with latency where you'll hit a drum and then you'll hear the speaker a split second later. So it's this weird, you know, flam sort of thing going on and you want to eliminate that latency issue. He talked about it in this quote. The problem we ran into with the drums is that there's a slapback with the speakers and the initial hit of the drums. It sounds really off. Anyone standing close to the drums hears me hit the drums and then they hear the mic sound of the kit coming later on. That's because of how arenas are set up. So here's how he fixed the situation. He's using a Roland TD50 drum module with Roland cymbals. 
So basically just elements from a Roland TD50 KV. And then he's using Roland triggers with mesh heads on his acoustic drums. So the audience still thinks he's playing an acoustic drum set. Basically what he's got going on is this setup right behind me right here. It looks like an acoustic drum set, but it's really not. It's all wired up, it's using mesh heads, and it's running to a drum module. And I think he's using a Roland Digital Snare with this setup as well. I just think it's really cool that he's using an acoustic electronic conversion drum set like the one I'm using behind me. All right, so that's the B stage setup. Now let's talk about what he uses to practice on and warm up on. So number one, he's been known to use a Yamaha DTX 950K. I don't know if he owns this one or maybe he was just playing on it. I saw it in this Vine compilation. I'll link that video in the description below if you wanna go check it out. He's also been seen playing this DW Go Anywhere setup. It's not electronic, it's a bunch of practice pads, but he's using it with Zildjian Gen 16 bronze cymbals. So these are electronic cymbals. They're just, um, they're the ones with the little mics underneath the bell and they go to this little module. It's basically a way for him to play on metal cymbals but not have all the volume. So that's an interesting setup just to practice up before he goes on stage. Now he did this really interesting video with Roland where he talked about how he got into drumming in the first place. I used to walk down to the local music store and sit down at the electronic drums. They were always Roland and I remember I would plug my headphones into the Roland brain. I didn't want anyone to hear what I was doing because I was embarrassed. I had no clue what I was doing. I remember the first time I learned to get all my limbs to do something different. I was so excited, I took the headphones out and plugged them into the amp so everyone could hear. I didn't care at that point. I think a lot of us have had this situation where we sit down at a music store to an instrument we're not very comfortable with yet and we're playing and we're like sort of turning down the volume because we don't want anyone to hear all the screw ups that we're doing because for some reason we think we need to impress the people at the music store. And then one day when we've finally gotten good at that instrument, we don't care if anyone can hear us. We almost want people to hear us because we're proud at how far we progressed. I thought that was a really cool story. And wrapping up the video, let's go to this one last quote. I think that I've always loved the implementation of electronics within music. I've always been very intrigued and inspired by the different electronic sounds or even just pieces of equipment that involve electronics. If you've got a semi-decent electronic drum set and a friend has come over to your house and they started playing for the first time, they've never played a decent electronic drum set before years, they always go to the EDM, dubstep, you know, rap, whatever, non-acoustic sounds in your drum module. They always go to those. And they're always intrigued by the diversity of different sounds there and how they can finally access and play stuff that an acoustic drum set just can't do. It's just that they're very good at certain things and you gotta use them for what they're very good at, mix that with acoustic drums, and the end result is beautiful. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this breakdown. If you wanna see more, uh, comment below a drummer that you want me to break down, and it might be the next drummer in this series. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in a few.